Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the community build series. Now this one has been done in collaboration with you the viewers and it's just to give me something to do during lockdown. Obviously I've been making videos and playing with technology and now that everything's relaxed a little bit more in the UK I am actually getting out to fly a little bit which is wonderful because I've really missed the experience of flying an FPV and I've been able to go out with a couple of friends observe social distancing but actually fly in the same area together. Now this series has been all around the Mini Drac. Now the Mini Drac is something that I bought. If you've been following along with the series, apologies, I'm just going to refresh everyone's memory. The Mini Drac is something that I bought back in summer 2018 and it's a very expensive model. The foam itself is about £150, the electronics for it about £150, the servo connector kits about another £25-£30. Um, we have a DJI F, but as it sits, it's relatively expensive. Now, I also really like things like the ZOHD Dart XL. has a similar kind of layout, uh, but it's an awful lot cheaper. Uh, you kind of get the full thing with the electronics for just a little bit more than the foam for the, for the DRAC. But the DRAC is an amazing flyer. So in this video, I'm going to go and show you what the Maiden did. Uh, apologies that the hair is getting a little bit longer. Desperately trying to keep it in check. Um... Actually, that's not bad, is it? My wife has been learning how to cut my hair, <laughs> watching YouTube videos, and she's doing an amazing job. Had to invest in some hair cutting scissors. I'm sure those of you watching are in a similar situation, unless one of your family members just happens to be a hairdresser. If they are, you lucky people. So, in this video, let me talk a couple of things before I get into the footage about making sure that you are actually ready to fly. Now, I've done a couple of extra things here in between the last video and this one and I'll go through the things that I do to make sure that particularly with an iNav wing it's going to give me the best chance of it going okay. Before I go to the field plug it back into iNav and make sure that as you lift the nose of the plane the front part of the little rotating cube that appears on the screen in the iNav GUI actually moves up as well just to make sure you've got the board orientation right. That's the most fundamental step, and it's easy to overlook and then build a house of cards on that. Uh, so do that just to confirm you've absolutely got that all tickety-boo. Confirm that when the model is level, and the reason I'm using air quotes is that uh, actually most wings have to be slightly nose up, um, that when they're in that attitude, on that GUI on the first page of iNav, it's reading as zero degrees pitch and zero degrees roll. If it isn't, then make a note of whatever the offset is when it is at that attitude that you want it to fly at, and then go in and adjust the, uh, the kind of board settings in the configuration tab. That might need to be changed um, on this maiden flight. I'll fi we'll find out in a minute if I need to increase or decrease mine. I've just eyeballed it and had a guess. I'd recommend for the first flight having a couple of flight modes set. I'd definitely set up a manual mode. That is going to allow you to take control of the vehicle. In the event that something horrible has happened, then you can put it into manual mode and hopefully that's going to enable you to bring it down without destroying the entire thing. Also, in addition to that, I put it into angle mode. Angle mode is going to limit the pitch and the roll. Uh, we set that last time with the CLI to have about 60 degrees pitch and roll which should be enough for the maiden flight. And again, we'll see how that's going to work. I've also turned on nav position hold, and that should loiter around the GPS coordinate that you set it for. So the idea is, is that you take off in manual. If I'm reasonably confident, I'll take off and stabilize. And then once I'm happy that that's okay, and it's all responding, and it's not spiraling into the ground, then I might try a, uh, a nav position hold and hopefully then that will circle around. If it circles around, it's doing a reasonable job, then I might try a return for home. So uh, I'd go for manual, I'd go for stabilize or angle mode. I'd go then for um, a nav position hold, which will loiter around. And then you could also set up a nav return to home and a servo auto trim as well. Now that means that I can flick a switch when I'm flying straight and level, even if it's in something like the angle mode, and that will reset the middle positions for the elevons on the back of the wing for straight and level flight in manual mode. Just means that when I do want to fly it like I stole it and just push INAV out of the way to have direct control of the vehicle, then 
it's already up trimmed for straight and level flight. It's a nice feature. I've actually asked iNav if they can add a feature like it's in uh, like it's an Ardu plane where that's done automatically for you. You don't have to flick a switch or turn a mode on. Um, Ardu plane just automatically trims the plane for you for manual mode. It's a bit clever. Check that you can arm the model before you go to the field. Obviously take off the prop for that stuff. Make sure that everything all works. Uh, check the on-screen display. If you can't arm it, it will tell you exactly in the messages part of the on-screen display where you're going wrong. Or you plug it back into the computer using a USB cable. Look at the arming flags in the right-hand side of the first page of INAV Configurator to see what your problem is. Last one is less about the technology, more about moral support. If you can, take a flying buddy. Uh, I always like to have someone with me. Um, if I'm going to be flying FPV, you've got a spotter anyway. But I always like somebody there also to potentially hand launch the model. I'm going to try and use Nav Auto uh, Launch on this particular one. I might do a video specifically on how I set that up. Uh, but that can... Uh, do a better launch often than than I can on my own. So uh, I would recommend take your buddy with you. Uh, they're also handy to help you find all the pieces if it goes horribly wrong. Now before every flight, check all the screws and connectors are good. Check the prop is on correctly and nice and tight. Check the battery is fully charged. Confirm the movement of the control surfaces. Use the high five thing in manual mode to make sure that all the controls are moving in the right way. And then once that's the case, stick it into stabilize mode and rock the model around to make sure that the controls are moving to correct that uncommanded movement. Just confirm that that's the case before you do your first flight. In fact, I'd do it every flight to make sure that something horrible hasn't happened in the intervening weeks when you haven't been flying the model. Check the central gravity is on the marks. Now with this wing, it's slightly forward, about I think 18, 19 millimeters. Uh, it's actually in the sheet that you download for this, but there's a central gravity position that the model should naturally bounce on. Pop your fingertips onto those two pieces and you should be able to kind of hold it up more or less. It should uh, just balance on those two points. Uh, if you have it slightly nose heavy, that's fine. Slightly tail heavy isn't great. I'm having to use a big 5,000 milliamp hour battery in my mini drac uh, pushed up nice and far forward, which is one of the reasons why the DJI thing was pushed forward to get the central gravity spot on. And that 5,000 milliamp hour pack should give me reasonable flight time too. Make sure you do know on your radio where all your flight modes are, particularly the manual mode and the return to home, the old gear switch, so that if anything goes wrong, you absolutely can get into one of those to try and rescue the model. And finally, wait for that GPS lock before you take off, because that will make sure that if you do initiate return to home, it flies back to you, not flies to another country. Now, there's only a couple of extra things that I've done on this model. First of all is I have done the ESC calibration. Uh, that's a very simple process. You go into the motor tab without the power turned on, turn on the output, push the throttle up to the top position, plug the battery in, wait for the beeps to finish, and then drop the throttle back down and you hear the confirmation tone and that should be your ESC calibrated. I've also done a couple of things with the DJI air unit. Uh, the air units get quite warm. It is in right underneath a vent at the very beginning of the model, but I have um, widened the space for it and glued in some uh, lollipop sticks actually. And that wood is going to keep that warm box away from all the foam and also aid a little bit more airflow as well because air can get to all sides of it to help it keep cool. And while I'm talking about the DJI unit, then there is the update I did to 1.00.05. That also should give me the altitude and the speed, which I'm interested in for this, because this should be a very fast little wing. Okay, enough of me banging on. Been going on long enough. Let's actually get to the footage. It's good. The other one good. Uh, just rock it side to side for me. That's manual. Okay, and again. That's angle. That looks good. Yep, good, everything. Okay. Ready? Ready? Awesome. Look at that. Oh my God. Okay, I'm on FPV. You, you're spotting. Yeah, I'm spotting. Can't 
Silly white's pretty fast. I dare you to give it a blip when you're that when you're coming back towards us. Take it out, yeah, turn right, around and bear, bear with, bear with. Wow. Oh yes. <laughs> I can't see, but that felt quick. That was very quick. Coming right at us. Can we have a lap and see whether or not we can get this down in one piece? Where are you going to land it? I'm going to go in the big field with all the, um, are you all gonna, the grass. Are you going to come towards us or? I'm going to come towards us, I think. Right, okay. So I'm out over the... Okay, right, bring it back in. Well, no, you're coming in big. That's all right. Behind the trees now. No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. Oh, there you are. Oh, wow. Now that's beautiful. Oops. Yeah, you're okay, you're okay. Oh, fabulous. Woohoo! Good God, that was amazing. Now, let's see how warm everything is. Let well, just, yeah, I was just, covers, yeah. Because everything. I want to see how we've done for the ESC and everything, and also we need to plug the, unplug the battery. It's alright. The battery's good. Air unit's warm, but not ridiculous. ESC's just slightly warm. I think that worked, mate. Yeah. Success? Success, yeah, really good play. We're all done. Very impressed. So there we have it. It flew and it flew very well indeed. A couple of things that I've learned from this maiden flight and I didn't get through everything that I would normally get through a maiden because there's a couple of things that I want to tweak before I try it again. First of all is that the plane flies absolutely fantastically well, tracks beautifully and actually flies better at the moment in manual mode just because of the way these right wing drags fly. Now I did notice that my nose was slightly up when I was flying along, uh, when I was flying what should be level, uh, I was actually gaining altitude slightly. So that means that I need to drop the nose down and redo that level calibration. My guess was a little bit too much. Other thing as well is the gains are going to need some work. In angle mode, it's a very calm day when we're doing the maiden. I'm noticing some bobbing in the pitch. So that means the P gain probably needs a bit of looking at and maybe an auto tune in the future. So that's something that I will need to address. I was very pleased to see the temperatures weren't bad inside the canopy, even though it was a very hot, sunny day. But having a little fan by the side of the air unit to blow air over it is probably not a bad idea. And I might look at doing that, as somebody suggested. So thank you to that person who sent me that note. There was no speed indication in the DJI HD goggles. In the latest version of the update, there should be, but there wasn't. It was showing my altitude, but it wasn't showing the speed. I'll have to keep my eye on firmware updates because I will be interested to see what kind of speed I get out of this when I open it up. And finally, because of those bobbing issues and because the level of the plane isn't set, I didn't go and do the server auto trim and also didn't go and do the GPS return to home until those couple of things are addressed. It's not worth trying those out. So hopefully this build has provided a little bit of entertainment and distraction. It definitely has for me during these tricky weeks. Thank you to everyone that's been watching through the series. I hope you're all well and happy. So stay safe and if you can get out there, happy fly. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.